What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 64 of the Charge to the Top here of Hereford FC and today we have the conclusion of at least the regular season of this season 7 here at the club in the championship. Of course if you've been watching the most recent episodes you'll know that we've been on a late playoff push. It has floundered in recent games, but with two games remaining today against Sheffield Wednesday and Burnley, we do still have an outside shot at a promotion spot. And that's what we've got to aim for, I think. So, last episode we took on Leeds, so that was a must-win game, and we won that one 2-1, of course. If you watched last episode, you'll already know that. Since then, a bit of a mixed bag, really. We won two games in a row against Barnsley and Cardiff, and actually, it looked like potentially for a moment we might even be able to somehow sneak an automatic promotion spot if we performed flawlessly. Unfortunately, we haven't performed flawlessly. You can see in this game against Barnsley, we were on the back foot for large spells of the game. Harry Butyman picked up a goal in the 54th minute. I reverted to our counter-attacking style. They tried to push, obviously, to try and get the equaliser. We hit them on the break. Brad Lynch getting the goal there. And, um, yeah, it, it kind of all went to plan, really. In this game, you can see Kevin Kelly picked up a little bit of an injury, which was a problem. Uh, but, fortunately, Brad Lynch, you know, the man coming on as his replacement, did get a goal, which was fantastic. In the next game we had against Cardiff, as you can see here, bit of a nightmare situation. Uh, Kevin Kelly wasn't ready to play a full 90 minutes, so I had him on the bench as kind of our backup striker. Before uh, Brad Lynch, as you can see, he picked up an injury in the 15th a minute, which put me in a, a tricky situation whereby I brought on Kevin Kelly... And then had to take him off because he wasn't going to last the full game. But I wanted him to play a large spell of the match. So he didn't do too bad. In the end, we won this game 2-0 against Cardiff. Great to get a win over our rivals. You can see we bossed possession. Would have liked us to perhaps take a few more chances. But nevertheless, good to see Jay Beckford and Barnby getting the goal. And well, Jake Beckford, he's been a standout performer, this guy, for us. Obviously, he joined us for £120,000 from Warsaw. Uh, you can see here, currently got some major interest from Hull. He has got a release clause of £10 million to a club in the Premier League, but I have just offered him a new contract, which is a significant pay rise to £5,000 a week. Um, but it does increase that release clause to £20 million, which if a team comes in for, they can have him. But, um, you know, I want to kind of safeguard, if possible, our best players, although... If we're being honest, Jay Beckford, I could see him moving for £10 million anyway, but I would rather try and tie him down to a contract with a high release clause on the off chance I do kind of want to keep hold of him. So anyway, two wins in a row, four wins in a bounce, uh, and I was thinking, yes, this is this is kind of you know our time to shine now. Unfortunately, as you can see here, we lost 2-0 against Birmingham. Uh, the goals come in either side of half-time, a penalty followed by a Bill Taylor second goal of the game. And then in our most recent game, we played Bristol City, uh, where we lost 3-1, and it was just a bad day at the races, if we're being honest. We never really showed up. It doesn't mean that going into our last two games of the season away from home here against Sheffield Wednesday and Burnley, we do start, at least for the moment, outside of the playoffs. Burnley, who we have on the final day of the season, are in sixth. So it might come down to that. Sheffield Wednesday, who we play today, they're going to be hot on our heels. And you can really see all the way down to Bristol City, really, although actually Bristol City have played a game extra. But all the way down to Aston Villa, teams with an outside chance at the playoffs. And we're going to be playing for each and every point that they can try and win uh, to end the season. It's worth knowing at the top of the table, Hull are promoted. They are champions. And it does look like Nottingham Forest are going to have to settle for third place. So... Let's get into this. Let's see what we can do. First episode, or first game of this episode is going to be against Sheffield Wednesday. Of course, the game then to follow against um, Burnley is going to be a massive one. For our team today, we go with Chucky in goal, the Nigerian top form. Not at the best average rating this year. Has had a few injuries as well, but he's a quality player, and I'm hoping that he can really shine through, I guess, for us in these big matches which are upcoming. At left back, we go with Kavanagh. Unfortunately, in the centre-back position, you can see here Harry Lennon currently out injured with a five strain, so he's not available as a result Rumsby comes into the side of course in on loan from Newcastle alongside him we go with Rob Dickey the 27 year old been a, a very key player for us this year 7.03 average rating not all uh, not bad at all for him Rojas of course playing at right back his form of late hasn't been that great he had a really good run of form and it's just been a shame to watch it slowly kind of fade away anyway in the center of the midfield Tom Davies is going to be our defensive man alongside him we are going to go with Needham the uh, Zimbabwe international, 23 years old, of course, joined us in January. He's not contributed a lot when it comes to kind of sh goals or assists, but a 7.1 average rating as well as a pass completion of 86% really gives you an indication of just how good he's been kind of with the ball at his feet, kind of creating play from deep for us. Out on the left-hand side, we go with Anthony Ford. 
Again, his form's been lacking Anthony Ford, but he's scored so many big goals for us and got some big assists. Hoping he can come big in the kind of, I guess, huge matches which are going to be played today. On the right, Jay Beckford, a player who's improved a hell of a lot this year. Really flourished playing regular first-team football. 13 assists and 8 goals across 42 league games for him. At centre attacking mid, we of course go with James Madison. Again, another player who's not really performed so much of late. I'm looking for these players to step up today. And we also have Kevin Kelly, obviously, leading the line. One goal and two assists in his last five. Could do with him turning up a little bit better as well. It'd be a shame, really, if we were to miss out on the playoffs. Uh, but it very much is in our own hand, our destiny. If we win our remaining two games, we will be guaranteed a playoff spot because we will have beaten Burnley, who are currently ahead of us. And I think that would swing the goal difference enough in our favour. Anyway, I'm going to tell the players... Um, what do I want to say? We've been doing okay lately, but we can do a lot better. Um, just, I mean, it's a bit of a split reaction, isn't it? No one seems to know if we're playing... Good or bad. Uh, I mean, I've probably, probably screwed up there. Probably screwed up, which isn't ideal. I feel like half the team were like, yeah, we've not played well of late. The rest of the team were thinking, yeah, we have played well of late. Thank you, Gaffer, for showing faith. Oh, dear. Okay, well, I might have balls that up there, good and proper, but we'll, we'll try and make something happen. Let's show the world what we're about. We're away from home here against Sheffield Wednesday. It's a tricky game for us. Worth noting, even if we were to lose this game, it does mean going into the last day of the season that we could still qualify for the playoffs. It would, however, involve us having to um, beat Burnley and by a margin of significance to swing kind of the goal difference in our favour, as well as a few of the teams hot on our heels not catching us up. But... I mean, we'll keep an eye on how Burnley are getting on. They're actually playing Stoke, a team who have vastly underperformed this year. Um, but I guess Brentford and uh, Sunderland could also get kind of sucked up into the mess that is this promotion push. So, I don't know. I feel like if we win our next two games, we probably do go into the playoffs. But well, with our form of late, it's going to be tricky. Let's just see what we can do here. We are on the attack. Sheffield Wednesday, they are in a bit of a slump. So, maybe we can capitalise on that as that's a very ambitious ball forward to... Beckford, but he's going to apply some pressure here, trying to force the area. In the end, back with Mika in goal for a second, I thought he was going to balls it up. We do have possession though here. Kelly, through on goal, Madison's on ahead. Can he finish it, James Madison? Just didn't show any composure with the finish. He's not been very good in his last five games. He had such a great opportunity for us there, the centre attacking mid and club captain for this match. And it's just a little bit heartbreaking to watch him squander that opportunity there. We have got a set piece here. Ball whipped in by Madison. Doesn't be the man at the near post, but he might get a second bite of the cherry here. Goes to Beckford at the edge. Needham, and well, we'll take that goal. We will take that. The guy who, of course, I just criticised earlier before the game for the fact he'd only scored one goal. He's got a goal for us now that moves us actually up to fourth. I mean, I can't complain about that. Beautiful goal, of course. You can see that it's very, very tight kind of in and amongst the teams at the top with obviously Sunderland, Brentford and Burnley all within touching distance and with the teams hot on our heels. The kind of playoff complexion, I guess, as a whole could vastly change over the course of the next two games. But that's the start we were looking for. We've not had the greatest start uh, to the season. We didn't have the greatest end to the season either in terms of our last few games. But if we can come alive in these last two matches, that's all I can really ask for. To Kelly, can he finish that? Mika... Great save by the goalkeeper, but a second clear cut chance of the game. A chance to double our lead here. Wasted, I think is the best way to describe it. It could have been so much more. Ball out with Madison still. Can he make something happen? Need him again. Surely not. Mika tips it wide. Actually, that was a, a half opportunity for the uh, for the centre mid to double his tally for the match. And also, I guess, double it on what it would have been for the season already going into this game. Anyway, we do need to block that, which we do do. Kevin Kelly, I mean, this is prolonged pressure... Beckford has pace. I thought he might just be able to break free of the the kind of Sheffield defender there. Unfortunately, the Wednesday defender did well. Although Madison, short freak. I mean, okay, Needham, fair enough. You've come alive in a big game, son. I'll, I hold up my hands and apologise for the fact I've criticised your lack of goals. I thought Madison was just going to score the free kick and do his standard thing. We have four men unmarked. I mean, it's a brilliant strike. I'll give it to him. I mean, come off the hour, come off the man. The club record transfer smashes one home and I can't I can't really fault him he's got two goals so far this game and that one was an absolute banger from the set piece I was convinced that Madison was going to shoot it he just laid it off to his mate and the well the centre mid lashed it home Tom Davis on a booking in the centre mid on defend duty doesn't 
make me feel very comfortable. We've not had any sendings off this year. I think I'm going to play it safe and probably take him off at half-time to try and keep that going. Um, we'll bring in Beautyman, I think, as his replacement. I'm just going to tell the players at half-time I'm very happy. I thought I might have screwed it up when we did the kind of team meeting just before the game, but, I mean, it doesn't seem to have affected performance too much. And we could be in a great situation here. You can see, looking at it, three teams on 73 points at the moment. Uh, and as things stand, goal difference would actually decide who makes the playoffs, which would be an absolutely crazy situation. We are in a fortuitous position where our goal difference is good. Obviously, if we could expand upon that kind of uh, kind of how good our goal difference is today, that would be ideal, I guess, as we will be taking on Sheffield Wednesday. And while we want to take the game to them, we're two goals up. You know, I might be inclined earlier on in the year to switch to counter at this point, but I feel like we need to play on the front foot. We might need goals to help us out. But, well, Kavner, lovely tackle there. Now can we get the ball forward quickly? We can. Kevin Kelly, not many options on ahead, but Ford's there. Palmer intercepts, goes back to Mika in goal, who's a long way out of his goal here. Don't screw up your kick, Mika, or you could be in trouble. Ball forward, Dickie wins it, Madison. Kevin Kelly, goal side of his man, wide of goal. Unfortunately, can't make anything happen, but it's back in the mixer. Madison, can he finish it this time? No, it hits the woodwork, I thought for certain. After he's missing the first half, he was going to score this time, but unfortunately, the keeper tipped it onto the post. And it didn't quite trickle over the line. But, uh, well, 2-0 up here, away from home. I mean, part of me is now tempted to go on the counter, actually, just to end this game. You know, just make sure we get the three points, because that could prove crucial. I don't know what Sunderland's goal difference is, but as things stand, they are below us. Let's take a look. Goal difference. There's his 13, so really expanding on our goal difference isn't the be-all or end-all of this. Although, actually, if we could get a good win over Burnley by a two-goal margin, we would leapfrog them in our final game. Of course, that is assuming things end as they are now. Norwich, you are in eight for drawing against Barnsley. Uh, Burnley are winning 2-0, so that doesn't really help us. Um, Brentford, where are Brentford? Sunderland are drawing 0-0 against Leeds. I can't see Brentford. Oh, Brentford are winning 2-0. So everyone's winning, really, around us. So it's a bit of a contrast. The end of last season where we, everyone was losing around us and we just threw it away. But 3-0 up here now, that's another, obviously, goal for the goal difference. Sunderland could be in trouble here, although it's worth noting, I guess, ourselves and Burnley do play each other on the last day of the season. So, I mean, one of us is guaranteed to slip up some points somewhere, um, which is a little bit awkward. I don't really want it to go down to the wire like that. But, well, this has been a tremendous performance, really, against Sheffield Wednesday, a team who uh, going into this season were kind of tipped to do good things. This year, at the moment, you can see they're down in 11th. They were, um, I believe, in 9th going into this game. And they had been up in the playoffs for quite some time, but they've clearly kind of tailed off as this season's gone on. And we've we've put them to the sword here. And, well, it'd be nice to keep the clean sheet. A chance there for Sheffield Wednesday to grab a goal. Actually got lashed into the side netting in the end. So we're kind of let off the hook. Um, looking at it elsewhere, if the scoreline's changed, I mean, Burnley are now slaughtering Stoke, so that doesn't really help us because their goal difference is going to be really good. Forest are losing 1-0 to Aston Villa, but that actually doesn't really affect them because they're guaranteed a playoff spot. Um, I mean, it's an okay, I guess, situation, although I think Sunderland might have just scored a last-minute winner against Leeds. Did they? Did they? They did. They scored literally with the last kick of the game to put us back into seventh and outside of the playoff spot. So it does mean going into the game against Burnley, we need to beat them. We really need to beat them. I can't believe that. They must have scored with literally the last kick of the game because that table changed right as the full-time whistle went. Oh, that feels like a punch in the gut. That really does. And now Burnley, our next game. Oh dear, I can't believe that. What? When did they score? It must have been so late on. Hereford Board, provide cash injection. I mean, thank you very much, Board, for helping out of our balance, because it was at minus one million. So you are at least slowly helping us financially, which I, I do appreciate. Sunderland, when did you score in that game? It must have been very late in added time. It was. It was the second minute of added time they scored. So it does mean going into the last game of the season. We are even on points with Burnley... A draw might be good enough if Brentford slip up. Um, Norwich are also going to obviously be looking to capitalise on ourselves and Burnley potentially drawing. Wow. Okay, it goes down to the wire for like the fourth season in a row. This is getting a little bit out of hand. Of course, we've never played through a playoff, I don't think, as Hereford manages. So this might be a change of pace. Obviously, that game against Burnley, a massive one. We're going to skip forward to that. Let's get into that match day. Hopefully, we can make a step up in our performances today and, well, hopefully come out on top. Okay, guys, so here we are. 
45 games have been played this season. Our fate, in terms of how our season goes, comes down to this. We take on Burnley. Um, they're a good team. They are very good, actually. You can see here they've only conceded 54, which isn't the best defensive record, but it's better than ours. Um, they have scored slightly less than us, but obviously you can see here their goal difference is better. I think this could end up being a bit of a thriller to end the year on. Obviously, we need a win. A draw against them is not going to be good enough unless Brentford slip up and Norwich slip up. You can see there's kind of still everything to play for. Even Sunderland in fourth could miss out on the playoffs here, depending on how results go. So, I mean, let's see what we can do here. I actually think Sunderland might be safe based off maths, but I don't think the game accounts the fact ourselves and Burnley are playing each other. Just so you guys can kind of see the other games going on, uh, if we look here at Norwich... Their final game of the year is against Sheffield Wednesday, who we just hammered, so they will probably be expecting to win that. Brentford, on the other hand, if we just look, they're going to be taking on Derby County away. So, I mean, maybe they can slip up against Derby, because Derby need a win to ensure that automatic promotion spot. So there is a chance, actually, a draw might be good enough if Brentford lose. I guess that's something we can hope for. Obviously, we need to get points from this game. It's going to be tough, but after that 3-0 away win... Against Sheffield Wednesday, I actually feel relatively confident that we can make something happen here. Burnley predicted to play a 4-4-2. If they do play that, I'll be very happy, actually. I think we can do well against that. Looking at their team, a few players we might recognise. Rolando Ahrens, uh, of course, Lewis FC Hall of Famer, going back a few football managers now. And they've also got one of the Murphy brothers who uh, used to play for Norwich. Uh, he looks pretty good, actually, on the left wing, Josh Murphy. Um, so, yeah, uh, not going to be easy for us, I don't think, to get a win over Burnley today. If we look at their history, you can see they've been a yo-yo team for a number of years in this save. Uh, last year, they were relegated rock bottom, and their manager, Ryan Giggs, I'm sure he is going to be desperate to finish in the playoffs this year. But anyway, let's get into today's game. In terms of the squad, full strength, which is nice. The only exception, actually, to that is the fact that Harry Lennon, not fit enough to start. 77% condition, still coming back from injury. As a result, Rumsby plays there. But the rest of the team, we've already run through it once. Chucky's there. Kevin Kelly's up top. This guy, if he performs, I think we win this game. 28 goals, 15 assists. He's been superb for us, the Scotsman uh, up front. Uh, I mean, just more of the same, please, today, please, Kevin Kelly. I'll say please multiple times in the hope that that helps us somehow. Uh, key player for our, us is Needham. He was superb last game. Two goals for him. Hopefully we can have more of the same. He does have the kind of player preferred move to shoot from range. And he kind of showed uh, a little bit of that last time out. As I said, they're playing a 4-4-2. I quite like our chances against that, although I am a little bit worried about their talent in the wide areas. We did lose to Burnley last time we played them, so I'm going to tell the players to look for revenge. And other than that, let's just get into this game. We need a draw as a minimum. I'm desperate, if I'm honest, to get a playoff spot. That would be such a great achievement here in our first year. And obviously, when you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. Obviously, it's going to be a struggle. If we were to finish sixth... There's a very high chance we'd end up playing Nottingham Forest, who, well, we've already talked about Nottingham Forest. They are kind of rolling around in money, but our form over them is actually quite good this year. But anyway, we're on the attack. Beckford, Rojas, inside to Madison, Needham. He scored earlier. I thought he was about to score again. Instead, Silvestri in goal does hold on to it for Burnley. Of course, the game we've taken a kind of note of, I guess, is the fact Brentford are playing Derby and also the Norwich game. And actually, Norwich... A leading, which does see them leapfrog both ourselves and Burnley as things stand. So that's less than ideal for both ourselves and Burnley. We're both going to need a win. Norwich 1 0 up after just seven minutes. So this is going to be a bit of a roller coaster, I imagine. Looking at the stats, we've had more of the ball. Burnley have had more chances created, but it's what you do when you do create chances. It's the quality of the chances, not the quantity. And I guess you could say the same for possession. And whilst we've had the quantity of it, we need to have some quality possession as Kelly's going to be through. Can he finish that? No, he can't. For a second. For a second, I believe that he was going to just lash that in and all was going to be fine in the world. Unfortunately, not the case. Brentford still holding on as well as things stand at the moment. So, I mean, Burnley, they're going to be pushing for the win. We're going to be pushing for the win. It's all a bit mad. Although Brentford, Brentford are now losing, I think. They're losing 3-0. They've conceded three times in ten minutes. That has escalated quickly. And, uh, well, actually, Norwich have now <laughs> had a goal scored against them by Sheffield Wednesday, the seasons go up into a playoff spot. This is absolute madness to start this. Um, I mean, there's not a lot happened in our game, in all tr honesty. We've had a few chances, but nothing to write home about. But as things stand, we would be in a playoff spot based on the fact that Norwich are drawing and, well, Brentford, they're losing 3-0. That's game over there. The big result, really, is hoping Norwich don't win now. 
Of course, we still have to draw this, so, I mean, we can't concentrate too much on what's going on on the left side of my screen. I should be focusing on what's happening in this game here and what we can actually impact. We've had more clear-cut chances than Burnley, although they've had more shots in general. But, well, we have a set piece here. Bex Beckford, Davies, Kelly now. Kevin Kelly can't get the shot away. He's dispossessed. Ball cleared away to safety. I'm a little bit kind of conscious of the fact we could get caught on the counter here. Because Burnley are creating a lot of kind of half chances. We're creating the clear-cut chances. Uh, but, I mean, 0-0 doesn't really suit any team. Norwich still drawing 1-1. I mean, can we just mutually agree to just sit in a big circle around the centre circle and sing kind of songs like Kumbaya? Because, I mean, a draw benefits everyone. Can, can we do that? No, Burnley don't want to do that. They're on the attack here. King cutting inside. Ennis should score this. He does score this. Oh, dear. That does see us drop behind Brentford. And now we need to go on the attack. And now I'm, now I'm concerned. Maybe I should have gone counter, uh, counter sooner. Oh, dear. Okay, down in seventh. I don't really want to panic, but I've got to change something in this game. Um, let's, let's try and play on the counter. The issue I've got really now is the fact they're probably not going to be so keen, Burnley, to commit that many men to the attack. Norwich are losing, so that's a good result as far as we're concerned. We need to score, though, and uh, Burnley are playing very well here. Ward on the attack to Malin now. Now with Sakai, you'd think if we concede again, that's game over. Ward scores. That might be GG right there. Um, do I want to change? I think I've got to change stuff, but no one's really performing. I'm going to do a triple change, I think. I think that's kind of the logical thing to do. I'm going to take off Ford and bring in Jack Barnby. Um, do I want to make my last change? I think I do. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take off Madison, who really hasn't had the greatest of games. I'm going to bring in Beautyman for him. We're going to play Jack Barnby out on the left, and I'm going to take off Tom Davies uh, for Ledston. So a big triple change there. A bit of a bold decision, but we have got to go on the attack now. We've created some good clear-cut chances in the first half. Unfortunately now, we need two goals, because as things stand, um, I mean... We're going to finish 7th and miss out on the playoffs by one spot, which is going to be disappointing. But, I mean, I'm not going to give up on the boys just yet. Two goals definitely doable in the time we have remaining. A triple change, perhaps a little bit of a roll of the dice early on here. Um, I'm going to change things up in terms. I'm going to play Ledston as a deep line play, make on defend. I'm actually going to give Neum, um, or Needham even, sorry, uh, more permission just to get forward and try and make something happen. Um <sighs> Chasing the game, it's difficult now, isn't it? I mean, we need two goals. I thought this game would have more goals in it, if I'm honest. I thought we might even score. I said if Kevin Kelly turned up, we'd do well here. We've not created enough, but there's still time. I want to remain optimistic with 20 minutes remaining, although that's not the great search, but Jack Barnby does very, very well there to get to the ball, but now we could be in trouble. They've got a lot of men forward here. King, Dicky, nice red read there. Ball goes back forward. Ledston, nice header, but straight back to Burnley. We are surrendering possession fairly frequently here. They're playing with three out-and-out -out strikers. They've really pushed on in this half. Mallon to Ward. Ward scores. That's game over. Our season's done. And, um, I mean, it's a little bit heartbreaking, isn't it, to go out in this fashion, kind of without a fight and really just with a whimper. Uh, uh, I mean, we won 3-0 in our last game against Sheffield Wednesday. I felt really good after that, but... I think it's hard to say we've been outplayed by Burnley side that just have significantly more quality than us as a newly relegated side. It's a very, very competitive league, this, of course, and with the likes of Nottingham Forest and Burnley, who were relegated last year, looking like they're going to have to slug it out in the playoffs. It was always going to be a tall order. It's just a shame that, as you can see here, we're just getting put to the sword in the end. Obviously, I'm going on the front foot, desperately trying to get one of the three goals that we need. I mean, there might still be time if we can get one, but it's going to have to take one hell of a performance. Jack Barnby's going to try and make something happen. He crosses it. Kelly's there. Kelly scores. I mean, maybe I shouldn't give up on the boys just yet. Maybe there is still time in this game. We've got to look for the overlap. We've got to close down more. We've got to really apply some pressure here. Um, there's not enough time in this game, I don't think, for us to grab two more. But we've got to try and do it here against Burnley. They're on the attack, but they've not got many men back. If we can hit them on the counter... The issue is, they're going to go up there and score 4-1. And, um, I mean, it's it's a disappointing way, I guess, to end the season. But the fact of the matter is, we're going to finish 7th here, I think, in our first season in the Championship. That's a tremendous achievement. That's nothing to be scoffed at. Considering our budgets at the start of the year, I mean, we actually made a, tra a transfer net profit over the summer transfer window, I think, with all the dealings that we did. 
it's just a shame, I guess, that it's going to end like this. You know, we're trying to commit men forward even now to try and get one of three goals that we need in the last nine minutes. But you can see Burnley, they've just got so much quality going forward. They could score again here. They have scored again. I mean, I will just kind of shrug my shoulders and say, I mean, I don't know. What do you say after this? We were unlucky. Is that fair? Probably not. I mean, we had two clear-cut chances in the first half to really kind of get ahead in this game, and we've got to live to regret them. Unfortunately, Kevin Kelly, chance fell to him. You, you'd back him to score it, and he didn't. And, well, we've tried to desperately, I guess, chase this game as the match has developed. And, unfortunately for us, it's just one hurdle too many. Let's not concede a sixth if we can avoid it. Rojas, nice tackle by him. Keeper might be in a bit of no-man's land here. Kicks it forward. Ennis to Woods now with Malin. I mean, let's not concede six. They've got so many men in the attack. There's a complete disregard for our team here by Burnley. I mean, we're on the attack here. It's a disappointing ball by Beckford. It does find its way to Beautyman. Now with Kelly. Still options on ahead. Can we get another consolation? I mean, we need a lot of goals in the last minute if we want to try and make the comeback. Unfortunately, Jack Barnby nods it over the crossbar. And it, with that, I think that's going to be all she wrote for this season. Um, I mean, obviously, next episode will be the end of season review. I'm, I mean, should I, I, I feel like I should be happy about the fact that we finished seventh here, because that's a, such a great achievement. We were predicted to finish rock bottom. The players have performed well. We've made some really good signings that I think we can build a really strong team around for a good kind of push next year for, a, if not a playoff, an automatic promotion spot. Like, certainly we should be having a, you know, a loose intention of at least getting to the playoffs next year, but... I don't know, we had such a good performance this year with the likes of Kevin Kelly and um, they've just kind of everyone's gone missing, I guess, for this last game of the year when we really needed them to. I'm going to tell the boys they were unlucky today. We finished seventh in the league. It's not the worst season in the world by any means. Um, I think we can hold our heads high. It's just a shame, I guess, the nature of that defeat against Burnley is quite humiliating and uh, you'd have to say they probably deserved it there. But Derby ended up beating Brentford, so a draw would have been good enough, actually, in the end for us to finish ahead of... Brentford and get that sixth place spot but I mean hindsight is a wonderful thing anyway guys that is going to wrap up this episode from me a little bit I guess demotivating to lose in that kind of manner obviously next season's going to be a big year for us I'm hoping we can build a strong team I'm hoping we can sort out the finances get some money in to actually reinvest into the squad and strengthen ourselves up for a playoff push next year I think that's got to be the minimum expectation based off how we finish this season um, but yeah, that's going to be all from me. As I said, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, I will see you guys next time for our end of season review for this season seven. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.